All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. And uh, in today's video, I have a really important topic I wanna to discuss with you guys today because it involves my favorite fig. My favorite fig is a lot of you guys have been following along with the channel. I've been highly, highly recommending two varieties to you guys. One is uh, Verdino del Nord and Ruccello de Elba. And the reasons for that we've been discussing over really the last few years is that they have superior drying capabilities any other variety I've ever grown um, and it really isn't even that close. A third maybe you could say is Campanieri in terms of those drying capabilities um, and that's really quite special here I've learned is that if you really want to grow figs in a humid climate and you want to have a consistent fruit quality you need to have a fig that has great drying capabilities because it's going to resist all of that nasty stuff in the weather that comes along with a humid climate um, and it will actually even though it might be raining or let's say a light rain uh, it could still continue to dry on the tree resist all those nasty elements so um, you know those are the figs I've really recommended in Bernino del Nord unfortunately as I really came out and said publicly that it was my favorite variety uh, last year um, people were looking you know, in a craze. They were just looking all over for this, for this thing and trying to figure out, well, where is it? How can I get it? Who grows it? You know, Ross, do you have any cuttings? Ross, do you have any plants? Um, which is awesome. I think it's cool that people are, are into some of the varieties that I've been recommending. But there was some confusion that was kind of propped up because Verdino del Nord, also there's a second variety that's entirely different with the same exact name. So that can be really confusing because there's two different Italian growers. One, um, her name is Tatiana. She has a fig called Verdino del Nord that she actually, someone has imported into the, into the United States. And I was able to get cuttings of that years ago because I thought it'd be very interesting. It looked like a really nice fig and I decided to grow it. And actually that's the fig that we have right here in front of me that we're gonna talk about in this video. Uh, the other variety though, Verdino del Nord, from a different Italian grower, from Vladimiro, Vladimiro Rocco, or VR for short is the initials, is the one that I really have been growing for many years and have really highly, highly given it a lot of respect. Um, so now that I've really ripened this other one here, um, I can definitively, and I've always been definitively saying, by the way, that but I can even, I guess more now really prove it to people is that this fruit is just drastically different than, you know, my favorite variety. Um, and we'll get into the reasons for that in this video. Um, so there's also, by the way, another variety called Figoin, which Vladimir Rocco, believe it or not, years ago on Figs for Fun had talked about that variety Figoin and had posted about it on Figs for Fun and kind of introduced it to the community and even some growers like um, uh, my friend Bass had actually got a hold of it and started growing Figoin. Um, so originally he actually, that's what he called it, was Figoin. And I believe if you translate that in his dialect of Italian or wherever, whatever it is, it means just small green fig. And there's many figs in Italy with the same exact name, Figoin. Um, so he then, I guess, on his blog, I don't know if he had changed it or maybe that was always there on his blog or his website, but Vladimir Rocco, if you go on his website, it's listed as Verdino del Nord. So this unfortunately then created all these problems, as you can imagine, is that there's really two names for the same fig, um, and there's then two different figs with the same exact name. And it depends on the source. And the people who are growing these figs, by the way, know their source. You should know their source. So if you're ever confused, where is it from? Don't ask, is it the one that Ross grows? You know, you should figure out, is it the one from Tatiana or is it the one from Vladimir Rocco? And if they don't know which is the case, then you shouldn't be buying plants from them, to be honest with you, because that's really critical of a really important thing to keep track of for the exact reason why what's going on right now. Um, so this one here, as I said, is from Tatiana, and 
I can tell you just by looking at the tree, looking at the leaves, uh, observing the fruits, looking at the fruits right in front of me, it's extremely different than the other Verdino del Nord uh, without even tasting it. Um, I don't know too much about this tree. I can't even really comment on the characteristics, to be honest with you. I can't tell you how vigorous it is. I can't tell you how you know, split resistant it is or how good the drying capabilities are um, or even really the flavor just yet because this is my first one that I'm gonna try. So all that stuff, unfortunately, takes years of evaluating to really know and say, well, that's what it is. So, you know, although I'm saying that they're different, the two Verdino del Nords with the same exact name, I don't really know much about the other one. And that, well, maybe the other one, the one that we're reviewing today from Tatiana, could indeed actually be a pretty good fig. And that was my hope when I first originally bought this thing. Uh, I bought cuttings and actually grafted a couple trees of it. So that's where we're at. That's kind of the whole full understanding right now of this particular variety is that I can tell you with absolute certainty that this is different, but let me try it. Let's at least do a, a review on the flavor. That looks very good. It smells great. It smells very fragrant. To me, it, it kind of looks like a Adriatic type. This is a fig that's the Adriatics type, uh, type figs are kind of like Green Aishia, JJ Adriatic, Taglia Green. That's kind of what the vibe is that I'm getting just by looking at this. Ferdino del Nord by Vladimir Arroco or Figoin is much smaller than this, unfortunately. Um, and it produces a lot of fruit. Um, it also produces a pretty darn good Breba crop. So, um, yeah, I just, everything about it, the leaf pattern's different, um, the habit of growth, just, yeah, well, we'll we could show it to you guys, and I guess at the end of the day, you just gotta take my word for it, but I'll show you a photo, I'll try to remember if I can put in a photo now of Verdino del Nord from Vladimir Rocco, and you can see just how different the fruits look. You know, um, the interior looks quite similar, and this is the other kind of weird confusion thing, confusing thing about it, is that they're both green skinned figs and they both have a dark red interior to them, you know? So uh, it is just extremely confusing and that's really why I'm making this video. So let's try this. It's very good. It's a very good fig. And to me, it does remind me a lot of a, you know, like an Adriatic, a green Aishia, green Michurinska, Bataglia green, Lake Spur unknown, Harry's Crete, you know, Sister Madeline's green Greek. There's so many of them. Strawberry Verte. This one, though, really has a nice flavor to it. So I'm impressed. The, the, the pulp seemed to be a bit thick, but it has been in actually inside my house for a couple days, sitting on my counter haven't been able to make this video. And uh, when it was sitting there on the counter, um, the pulp I imagine and the, the fruit itself was kind of drying um, on, the, on the counter and the pulp kind of congealed a little bit. So it turned in like, uh, into like a fruit leather, into like a jelly type consistency. But I imagine it actually would be uh, more thick, more jammy if I picked it right off the tree um, and ate it like that. So. Yeah, pretty good. Let me just show you the tree really quickly. You guys can be on your merry way. You know, I wish this confusion didn't exist. It's not my fault, unfortunately. You can see here the leaves. Uh, by the way, I did stake the branches to really open the tree. Uh, that's why the branches are kind of growing downwards. And because of that, some br new branches have kind of come up in its place. This is the graft union right here. And you could say that it doesn't have the most vigor to it. So maybe the, the vigor is pretty low on this variety, just like Virgino del Nord. But you know, the, the most important thing when identifying a fig variety is the shape. You know, you really wanna look at that shape and observe this because this is the most reliable characteristic out of any characteristic. You know, people like to look at the leaves, people like to look at the branches, people like to look at 
the colors of the fruits. But to be totally honest with you guys, the most reliable indicator is the shape. Um, and the shape is just not, it's just not exact. It's not right. Um, the stem typically is a bit longer. The fruits are actually a bit um, uh, more round. So this one seems to be a bit more pyriform in shape, which is pretty good. And typical of like, you know, um, or even your Ciolata, which is typically, typically what you see from an Adriatic type, you know, green Aishia, that kind of stuff. Uh, I do have a Verdino del Nord that I'll show you guys, or Figoin that I just grafted this year. Um, I don't have the fruits, unfortunately, to show you guys side by side, but you can see, look, here's the, the leaf pattern on this. And you can see they've got longer fingers to them. They produce smaller leaves. Um, and it's got like five lobes if, or three lobes. And these two back pieces here is really consistently what you will see. Just like that. And uh, the branches are also very thin. So people like to complain a lot about the thinness of the branches. Uh, and every variety is different. So like Neruccio de Elba as an example is also a quite a dwarf variety. They don't put out very thick wood. The wood will not be thick because the vigor is low. And that is the way that you can determine the vigor of the tree. And I would argue even this particular variety has some pretty thin wood to it. So both of the Verdino del Nords might be actually quite dwarfed or lower in vigor. So anyway, that's a pretty big difference there in the leaves and the fruits. I mean, I don't really think anything else needs to be said, to be honest with you. I think both of them are pretty darn good in terms of flavor. Um, the problem is though, you know, someone's gonna ask, well, Ross, is the Verdino del Nord that you just tasted, is that better than the Verdino del Nord that you recommend? And the answer is, well, maybe. You know, it could be, um, you know, that was a pretty darn good fig, but I only had one, number one. Number two, if you compare the top, the best Verdino del Nord I've had, or the best Figoin I had with this one, Figoin wins. But, you know, also I think, um, what I really want to say about this, what did I want to say? I wanted to say is that I don't know how consistent this Verdino del Nord is going to ripen at a high quality. So yeah, maybe the best ever fruit I get off of this particular version of Verdino del Nord, the Tatiana version, is let's say better tasting than the Verdino del Nord from Vladimir Rocco. But how many of them at that quality am I going to get? You know, so um, that's the beauty of Figoin or Verdino del Nord from Vladimir Rocco is that it produces such a high quality fruit consistently every single time in this very poor fig growing climate. And that's why it's so special is that it does produce a high quality fruit and the fruit is really tasty. So anyway, guys, I think we had enough. Thanks for watching this one. If you enjoyed this one, hit the subscribe button. Check out our blog, figboss.com. We have so much fig-related information there. Uh, we're going to post all kinds of blog posts there on all different kinds of varieties here. Like this one's coming up soon. It's called Monaco. This is another interesting Italian variety that we'll see uh, how it tastes, and we'll talk about it there. So see you guys soon, all right? Catch you for the next one. Take care.